My name is Bastian Gerner. I work for more than 20 years in the pro audio industry. I started out in the music business, then changed into the post-production film world. And now I'm working in the AAA games industry for four years now as a senior Foley artist. And I'm also a sound engineer and a sound designer. The empty room you just saw is the room I'm sitting in right now. And I'm taking you on the journey from empty room to my studio. So let's go. So as a Foley artist, I worked on many, many films. You can see that on my IMDb, mostly German TV and cinema productions. And lately, as my game credits go, I worked on um, Assassin's Creed uh, VR and also on The Settlers, New Allies and Avatar Frontiers of Pandora and Anno 1800. To be able to work in a professional room, that is something I want to have at hand all the time. So, um, because I'm also into music myself and there are so many things I, I like to do, I like to do stuff for my friends or if I have some side project I want to work on, it was always possible all those years. And that's also like how the industry works. You make connections, you work for people, you do something for someone and then things come back to you. And I, I wanted to continue working like that, but it wasn't possible with the Ubisoft facility. So I needed something on, for my own to be able to, to work on the things I want to work. So when we moved into the house here in Düsseldorf, um, it was very clear for me in the very beginning that this could be a potential home studio for me. When I decided to build the room, for me it was clear a couple of people I want to involve. First off, Markus Bertram for the acoustic design, then Heiner Niemann for the technical planning, and also my friend Bernhard Russo for the light design. And then um, we involved uh, also David Ziegler from Dolby, because we wanted to make sure that he is okay with all our planning, so that we hit the spec once the studio is there. My name is Markus Bertram. I'm an acoustic engineer and a musician, and I'm the founder of MB Acoustic. MB Acoustic is um, a mixture of an engineering company and uh, a handcraft company. So we are uh, doing all the standard engineering stuff like measuring, calculating, planning, design. And uh, we also build what we have designed before and we also mount it on location. Our main business is the design and the building of recording studios. And uh, so we're acoustic professionals. Um, but we also take care about uh, home theaters and, and other rooms where the acoustic is crucial. Uh, we all work together as a team on recording studios. And I think that's what makes us Unique. That's what it's all about for us. Yeah. We are waiting for that the Doro with the acoustic module comes. And there is the applause for Doro. I knew Bastian because he is working for a customer of us, and so I was very happy when he called me and said, "Yeah, he has some plans to to build a studio of his own." Markus and I, we go way back. I worked in studios that he had designed in Berlin, so I knew about his work already as an engineer. So I definitely wanted to uh, work with him. As you can see, we have a lot of trap cores here for uh, bass absorption for low end. And uh, this stuff will all um, be around my front speakers. And um, in the back, we have also a lot of equipment that has already been delivered. So all the speakers and um, my interface and a lot more. My job is being on location and uh, leading the project and uh, I love just the feeling, that's what I can say, uh, when, I, when I watch a project 
coming to reality. So yeah, the first time it felt real was when Markus came here with his subwoofer and his laptop and we did the model anal analysis um, to getting all the, the, the room modes um, measured. Und das gibt's jetzt auf den Subwoofer drauf, damit wir mal hören, wie sich das aufschaukelt, oder? The first thing we did is what we call um, the analysis of requirements. That's what you could say in English. Hier, hier verschwinden, wenn du hier in die Mitte gehst, ist er weg. Mm. Und wenn du hierher kommst, kommt er halt wieder. Das heißt, der schwingt in dieser Richtung. Oder wenn ich jetzt spreche, wird das aufmodulieren. Klingt auch total scheiße eigentlich. Ne? Das heißt, das ist die erste, erste Eigenmodel in dieser Richtung. When Markus was here and we were placing the microphone and the subwoofer and he was measuring everything, I could really experience how those low-end waves are um, affecting the room and how uh, at a certain position in the room I cannot hear the low end at all and at a other position in the room it's really loud and then at the next position in the room it's only half of the loudness, let's say. So these things were interesting. Bastian uh, explained to me what he's going to do in this room, what uh, kind of usage he is going to, he's going to have, what his dreams are like. Yeah, there are three usages, uh, three tasks uh, for the studio. Um, one is editing, and mixing, if possible, in Dolby Atmos, which is a lot of speakers in a small room. That's not so easy. And um, it's always good if you go in the middle of the room so that the distance to, to each speaker is as big as possible. Number two would be mixing and producing urban music, which has a lot of low frequency energy. And uh, the third, usage would be uh, Foley recordings. Bastian is a professional Foley artist and of course he would like to, to, to make Foley recordings, Foley sessions in his own room. For this we would basically need space in the middle of the room. So um, it's all about it's all about space. Our task as a studio designer was to find the right compromise for each usage so that everything is possible in this room on a professional level. Let's do it. So I expected from Markus to come up with a design that fits all my needs. I wanted to have a really dry room for recording my Foley and I also wanted to have a controlled low end in order that I can really mix music here on a professional level. And these two things come not together very easily, especially because you need a lot of space to get the, the low end absorption correct. And I need space for my performing sounds and recording them. So there, there was the, the big challenge uh, for Marcos. And of course, then when the modules came and the, the building process started in here, it was really exciting for me to see all the pieces come together. Dolby Atmos is uh, out there for more than 10 years and I, I'm following the whole development of Dolby Atmos those 10 years, but I was never really able to, um, to work with the format because I switched into the games industry before my company implemented Dolby Atmos in the studios. So this is now my chance to adapt the format and to work in all those different areas I like to work in. So I want to, um, to mix in here linear content as a re-recording mixer in Dolby Atmos. I want to be a Dolby Atmos music mixer because I really love music and I'm a musician myself, I'm a rapper and to mix music was always something I really enjoyed, I really loved. And to have this new format now, which also gives a space for like, let's say new people to enter the game again as an engineer, 
this is my chance now to, to take it and to be part of the music industry again as an engineer with Dolby Atmos Music. The normal process when you build a studio is that you have the electricity in first and then all the acoustic modules get installed and after that you can come in with your gear and uh, make all the final installments. But in my case, the acoustic treatment was installed first and after that we could um, build in the electricity. So yeah, when they came with all the modules, um, Sebastian also joined, he's a professional craftsman uh, working all over the world and he um, basically mounted all the elements on the walls and did all the handiwork in this room. It took him four days to assemble everything and uh, yeah this rather happened very quickly after we finished the planning. You have all the acoustic treatment already mounted on the wall and then electricians come in and drill holes all over again and um, you know there's a lot of dirt so you don't want to get your um, nice acoustic treatment material dirty again. So that was one thing and also um, some cabling issues on the ceiling and so it, it was not really clear like if everything works out fine but uh, Markus already um, planned that in his design. Uh, to assemble these sheets um, uh, on, on the top uh, we used magnets um, because uh, maybe the electrician have to put some wires more so everybody can take this down and put it up again so it's very easy and it's I think it's a new technique that we use for yeah for assemble this this parts uh, with magnets um, yeah an issue here with the room is that my electricity is not sufficient and I have to bring in more phases um, okay. to get like the proper amount of electricity and, yeah. and um, so that's very handy to have yeah. those magnets because yeah. then I can easily get the cables on uh, over the top here yeah. um, on the ceiling and then put yeah. it back on. You can do everything afterwards. Yeah. So. Acoustic design, by the way, is is not the, 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 the choosing the right color of the fabric or something. Acoustic design is technically designing the way the room should sound and what we have to do what module, what bass trap, what absorber, what diffuser we have to place. Uh, if you talk about Foley artist, you need as much space at the back of the room as possible. If you talk about Dolby Atmos, you have to have a mixing position which is right in the middle of the room. If we talk about um, urban music production, we have to make sure that we have enough bass traps in the room. These kind of guys to dampen the own modes so that we have a tight, massive, but tight and, and dry and, and, and clean bass signal. The fundamental basis of the acoustic design is the modal analysis we did before. So we knew pretty well how the room is reacting and is behaving. And then we can use this computer program which is quite sophisticated to, to identify problems and to, to develop solutions that help us to um, absorb all the low frequencies as good as necessary without spending too much space. Mm. That's what we did then. Here in the back, we have um, those four huge um, trap cores. Yeah. And our initial um, thinking was we used just the uh, two of them. Okay. And I can have like a, a, a lot of um, space to yeah. uh, store my Foley props. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I saw the first um, design of the room, it was all covered <laughs> with bass traps. I thought, okay, like now my Foley space is gone. But you know, the sound of the room and in or is more important. We have standard absorber modules like these light gray modules over here. They're just absorbing everything every sound that's, that's, that's coming to them. So um, um, the next type would be diffuser model, which is not absorbing, but distributing the sound into the room. I can demonstrate if you want. I don't know if, if the sound is good enough, but if, you, if I just come close to a diffuser, the sound changes dramatically and it's, it's, it's a very 
a bit strange sound because I'm too, too close to the diffuser. And if I'm going to the absorber module, it changes. It's a totally different sound because everything is absorbed from the, from the module. So these are two of the three modules that we're using. Not only we are, that's just standard to use mm -hmm. them. And the uh, third one are these bass traps. We have um, a lot of different types of bass traps. This is a module which is called Trap Core. It's the core of a bass trap, basically. So there's no, no uh, wood construction uh, over here. It's just the, 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 the functional core of the bass trap. It's the most cost-worthy bass trap that we have, and it's totally custom-made. There's still a lot of work to, to do until the room is finished. Not only the electricity and wiring everything, it's also um, the measurement of the speakers and um, to make everything sound right. So stay tuned for the next part. Peace.